the point of the movie is that this is bullshit. Because their enemy is Filipino. Hello everybody and welcome to the Filipino Freethinkers podcast that's also a video. I'm Red. I'm Pepe. I'm Adi. Yeah, welcome to, uh, to the show. Thank you. And uh, we watched a movie the other day. Yeah. It's what a lot of people have been watching about, have been talking about, ranting and raving about. It's uh, General Luna. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, it was General Luna. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, a lot of people have been looking forward to this, but and as promised, here we are. And we're. Um, I, I've posted some stuff about the movie. Um, you know what I thought about the the movie as far as quality goes. You know about the message, about the nationalistic theme of the movie, and it got a lot of people riled up. And I did promise that I would elaborate in on this episode, and that's what we're gonna do. So, um, as a, as an outsider. Yeah, outsider. Yeah, explain your, your, you know, explain to the audience, like, you're, uh, you're uh, from India? <laughs> no, <laughs> origin yeah, yeah. Story. Your origin story, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I'm half Filipino, but I grew up in Europe, mm. mainly in France, so my approach of the movie was really, like, more of a foreigner discovering what was one of his origin countries about, one of the heroes, mm. Yeah, at least that's how it's called. Okay. That was how I approached the movie, at least at the beginning. And an interesting hap thing happened in the beginning. You actually watched the movie without subtitles. So exactly. Understood nothing. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. Not a word. Yeah, and yeah. all I saw was images which were like, mm, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's, that, that's what and then we watched it again. Mm -hmm. And then we still understood nothing. No, no, no. Uh, you, there were subtitles this time. <laughs> yes. And yeah, now you can make a proper assessment of the movie. Did you like the movie? Um, you will be deported uh, if you <laughs> don't like the movie. You know that, right? Like, I'm just warning you. Uh, we will have to blur your face if okay. you say negative things about the movie. I loved it. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it deserves okay. the Oscar right oh, now. Okay, now we will blur you. You can, <laughs> okay. you can speak honestly okay. now. So, um, on a cinematographic point of view, I think it's... It's good. I haven't seen so many Filipino movies because it has been compared mainly to Filipino movies, and on that point, I cannot give any. Okay, uh, so so as far as opinion, you know, like the films you've seen from Bollywood, from <laughs> from, yeah, from France, from, Hollywood, from France, from Hollywood, from, from Hollywood. Yeah. yeah, it's. Um, I'd rate it like. Okay, a seven, maybe okay, six, that's seven ish, something six. like that. And it, you said an interesting thing there. People have been comparing it mostly two Filipino movies. Yes. And um, I think that that's part of what we'll talk about mm -hmm. now. Like uh, a lot of people are saying that it's good, but are you saying it's good for a movie or for a Filipino movie? Yes. Pepe. Well, from my standpoint, I've seen a lot of other Filipino movies, um, but not as much as like more, most people I would guess, because I have stopped watching Filipino movies. Mm. I, I, I found it hard to find re, re quality Filipino movies. So you think for a movies are bad? And their country's bad, huh? Mm -hmm. what? Yeah. Is that it? I okay. think all countries are bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, there are there are good Filipino movies. I liked, for example, On the Job. Okay. I liked On the Job was fine. Yeah. Um, it's good. Metro Manila was also good. That's something I want to watch. I've uh, um, been hearing good things about that one. Yeah, and General Luna, I would give it like seven. Um, you won't get deported. Okay. I, <laughs> seven. <laughs> I, I liked it mostly for the humor. Mm. But what's funny yeah. is some of the people I talked about, that's the part they didn't like. Yeah. So, like, they, it's a they wanted it's a, to yeah. be serious. They wanted yeah. it to be important and yeah, yeah, yeah. straight faced. And I'm like, what? I like the, the funny parts. Mm. I yeah. like the funny parts the most. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, it's interesting how that's what turned other people off and um, comparing it to other Philippine movies like it's way up there on a global scene like, oh, yeah. it's not as good okay I mean, what I'm saying is okay of course you know there's old exactly. boy from Korea or oh you know God, like yeah. Shawshank Redemption or the Matrix or Sharknado you know like, <laughs> there are all of these like epic movies and does it you know like measure up to the standards of those oh. other other cinema classics. No. Let's talk about the movie now. Uh, what about it was um, made it a seven or a six point five for you? Let, let me have my say. Uh, I made a comment 
uh, on online that I thought it was made by at least four different directors. Like each act was directed maybe by a different person because it was so different. It was, you know, an even, I think, characterizes the movie. I mean, it started bad for me. Like the, the parts with the, where the, the Americans... Uh, it, okay, it wasn't that they were acting poorly. Yeah, yeah. I thought that the script was bad. I mean, the lines written for them was cliche. And th those are what you call, or what screenwriters call, the unactable scenes, unactable scripts. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just too one-dimensional. The, the dialogue was on the nose, you know, like, um, she's ours, boys. <laughs> I mean, how do, how do you even act that well? I mean, acting is about uh, adding the subtext yeah. to, the, to the text. And there's just no adding subtext to that. It's just plain one-dimensional. They just workman like uh, you know I, I need something for this guy to say to advance the plot a bit mm -hmm. and that's the kind of dialogue that they gave to the to the Americans um, it it shows that the writers though or the writer I don't know who um, how they worked on this they loved the Luna character it oh. seems you know like yeah they were written well <laughs> except when <laughs> except when the dialogue was like um, they were they had it was like it was written by an English speaking screenwriter who had cliches for dialogue and then translated it into Tagalog. So, you know, like cliches like, uh, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. You know, you just translate that into Tagalog. That's the kind of dialogue that I kept on noticing. Cliched, um, there were original parts, of course, but the, the figures of speech were obviously taken from English and then translated into Tagalog. That's why it, you know, it stuck out. You know, like, like good films, I think, shouldn't have uh, dialogue that bad. Unless, of course, they were aiming to make a slapstick comedy and the part that you're appreciating, yeah. right? Because it was funny at parts, right? But, but um, it's funny to me that a lot of people are just defending, like going out of their way to defend the movie. Like ah. you say something bad about it, they, they say, oh, the director or the writers intended it to be like that. Wow, very, how convenient. <laughs> like the criticism was also intended. I mean, and that's where the discussion or, or you know, that's where, where our discussion uh, comes in. Like, are people patronizing the movie? Like, what I mean by patronizing, of course... Uh, There's two senses to the word. Yeah, two yeah. senses to the word. You can patronize something, you know, you can um, support the, the products of Filipino uh, directors, for example. And you can be patronizing in the sense that you're condescending. Like, okay, like, um, it's, like it's like a child, you know, a, a grade school production team mm -hmm. made this movie and you judge it based on the standards that a grade school production team can make. And you call it the best movie ever made. Let's make this the national movie of the Philippines and show it in every school and college as a required viewing. Mm -hmm. You know, is it that good? I don't think so. And I really, I, I'm interested in the, the, the way people who, who overly praise this movie, you know, the mindset. If this were like the equivalent, let's say a, a, a French uh, or, you know, let's make it somewhere else, Vietnamese film mm -hmm. about their heroes oh, and sure. made in this quality, you know, this kind of quality. Would they watch it and then think that it's the best, you know, one of the best films they've ever seen? Like how much does the I Am Filipino play into the rating or the appreciation mm -hmm. of the movie? I think for the people who are raving about it, a lot. And yeah. even the, the very... The very first sentence that the movie shows oh, says that okay, you know, it should okay. not be shown at school because they took liberties on. Did the they say that it shouldn't well, be shown in school? They didn't say, they didn't it, say it shouldn't be shown in school. But okay. they did say that. We will they get took to liberties. that. Uh, we will get yeah. to that. Yeah, no, um, they didn't say that. But what they said, that, like the first sentence that they said in the movie, yeah. makes it hard to actually being taught at school when you say, yeah, yeah. Like, how would the in teacher, history class, for example, yeah, yeah. how would the teacher present? The part that is fake and I mean imagined yeah. by well, the, it could be a uh, you know the the doorway into learning more about history. You show them wrong history and then you correct the you know you correct it. I mean, uh, okay, let's let's get to that. That's that's a very crucial part of the movie. The very first sentence that they show on screen it goes something like this: There are truths about the Filipino people that are best expressed when you combine the real and the imaginary. I mean, that already 
uh, you know, rang the alarm bells in my mind. Okay, uh, and it immediately remind reminded me of Marcos. Oh, yeah. You know the dictatorship uh, and all of these pro Marcos. How do you say imbecile uh, on uh, <laughs> on Facebook? Apologies. Who, yeah. uh, apologies. Okay, that's the word I was looking for. Maybe imbecile is too generous. <laughs> um, anyway, editing history to give greater truths. I mean, if you wanted to show truths about the Filipino people, why not make a, a fictional movie with that message? You know, it's essentially a propaganda movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It has a certain propaganda. The message, of course, is that uh, regionalism is wrong. And the and nationalism is the tribalism that is good, no and uh, and Let's Americans are bad. Uh, when Camino is bad, Aguinaldo is bad. <laughs> Luna is good but rude. You know, you know that's the propaganda of the movie. They, yeah, yeah, they yeah. really try to hammer that in there. Yeah. yeah. But if you want to send a message, you know, history or editing history, I don't think that's the way to do it. I mean the 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 plus side of of uh, of history or true stories is that it actually happened mm -hmm. that way and if people watch it and they don't know or they, they see it as history there's it just gives a different uh, yeah. th there's an, an extra appeal to it you know but there are contested parts of history like about um, Aguinaldo mm -hmm. and uh, the role that he played in the on the deaths of uh, both Bonifacio Spoiler alert. We should have, you know, there, there must have been a spoiler, spoiler. alert at yeah. the beginning of this episode. <laughs> Bonifacio uh, died. Bonifacio and Luna's deaths, you know, how much uh, Aguinaldo played in that. Like, uh, was it really that simple? Mm -hmm. he, he was just afraid that these people would take away his power. And, you know, he just had them killed. And they, it paints Aguinaldo, obviously, yeah, in a very, very bad light. And how yeah. historical is that? A lot of people are contesting this. Yeah. How much of a hero was Luna? Um, he's been called by the movie as the most brilliant general that the Philippines has ever, he never ever had. Won and he never won a battle, according to historians. Yeah. Or um, I heard you, you were at a lecture by Ambeto Campo, right? Yes, I was. And yeah. this was, you know, the kind of thing that he said mm -hmm. about uh, not winning a battle, and he's the most brilliant. Uh, <laughs> what I what I remember from the lecture that we heard is that before that. Um, the, the moment that are stated in the the movie, yeah. he was at, there was a, the the Spanish Revolution, mm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was uh, taken as prisoners. And today there are uh, there are proofs that he actually used what he knew information mm. in order to kind of save himself. And okay, he not out. so patriotic, and uh, you no, know, not really. Like, I he mean, should not be. So he became an informant. Or sort of, kind of, right? sort of. I, uh, that, that's why I'm very vague in what I'm saying because I don't want to. Okay, state the fact if I can. But um, as far as the movie goes, he's the most patriotic person ever. Like uh, everything he does, like he, for the country, his blood is colored Filipino. Like, uh, he would never uh, even imagine betraying his country. And it's not. I mean, if you're if you're uh, captured by the enemy and under threat of torture and death, mm -hmm. I mean, it's okay. You can do certain things, and you can be forgiven for that. Mm -hmm. But to paint. I mean, it's just so black and white, this yes. movie. When Camino's a bad guy, Aguinaldo's a bad guy. Well, well not so much, not so right? Much. Not so much. It's okay, little, little okay, little he's great, he's great. But for the most part, okay, it's black and white, right? And uh, so, okay, it's so one thing to, to judge the merits of the, of the movie, which I think are, yeah, there are some good parts, right? But let's now go to the message of the movie, because that's an, uh, a separate thing. Okay. Because... You know, I, I was entertained by the character of Luna. You know, as a character study, you know, he was a uh, he was less cartoonish than the than yeah, the Americans, he actually, but he was pretty cartoonish yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, the the That's way he I was, uh, yeah, <laughs> like, hey, don't waste bullets. <laughs> like he shoots his revolver at yeah. long range, like what, without even aiming. Yeah, yeah, guys, this is how he waste bullets. Uh, <laughs> And he, the way he threatens that, uh, that guy with the chicken. And I didn't then, get that part. Let's get back to what you were saying, like black yeah. and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, would, would the idea of what they're saying be uh, regionalism, it would be black, and the nationalism in white? That, that, that cannot work. Like, in any country, at least of all those that I've been yeah. to, like, you cannot just expect from all millions of people mm. in the same country to all unite and 
not give an interest to what makes them different. Like yeah. Regionalism of, they always t use the term family also in the movie. Yeah. Like yeah. Filipinos just t care about their family and they should care about the, the, the nation. Yeah. You're like, dude, uh, <laughs> yeah. good they care for family. Like I've seen places where they don't give a shit about family and that's actually yeah. something that Filipinos should be proud about. Yeah. But if the idea is there's not enough love for their own country, like nationalism, mm. maybe that idea should be actually enhanced and people should maybe, at least that's my opinion, yeah, like okay. you, you should love your country. Mm, the idea of dying for it, like, let's talk about that. <laughs> okay. Because uh, that's the way you can love your country, right? Yeah. You die. Can... It's, a, it's not even die for it. Like, how can you die for, for the country? You're dying for some people who claim yeah. to be the leaders of a yes. country. Like it's um, the the main choice that these people in the that these non uh, non uh, main characters of the movie were presented was essentially like it's either you die in the hands of the Americans or in the hands of the Filipinos. Yes. So take your pick. Wouldn't you rather die <laughs> by the hands of this? Uh, you know, because because they'll be killed if they yeah. didn't go to yeah. war with the Americans. They'll be killed. Like, would you ra wouldn't you rather be a slave for your fellow Filipino than a slave for a for a foreigner? Mm -hmm. That's essentially yeah. the choice. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, can I like opt out of both? <laughs> no, I kill you. Boom. <laughs> like, he actually tried to shoot the yeah, guy yeah. or wasted the bullet, and he couldn't <laughs> he couldn't shoot someone who was that far yeah, away. The defector. The defector who was the kid yeah, of the Ben yeah. Camino character, right? Like rule number one. Yeah. Is that uh, really articulo, a thing? Like articulo articulo uno. uno. Articulo yeah. uno. Is yeah. that really a thing or? Well, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's enough of a thing that they made it the name of the production studio yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that yeah, made the movie, that, right? Oh. Yeah, yeah. If you, yeah. if you leave, uh, you'll be treated as a traitor and you will be... No, it's if you do yeah. not listen to what the general says, you are considered as a traitor. So Something like that. You yeah. will be shot without trial. Yeah. That that sounds very fascistic. Yeah. Uh, that is the word. <laughs> that is the word. Bingo, fascist. Okay. Um, well, definitely, I am all for like self defense. Right? I see the Americans coming my way. I'm going to arm myself to the teeth. Mm. I may or may not coordinate with my neighbors. Probably, I will try to coordinate. Okay. I would not threaten them with. I would not threaten to kill them if they did not want to fight with me. Mm. You know, like. I would try to set to like organize some sort of militia, mm. self-defense militia, but I would not like force people mm. to go into the militia. Because you know, like that that's sort of defeats the purpose, yes. right? Like you're fighting for freedom, and you're not giving give up your people. freedom yeah. for now. Yeah. You might die in the process, but eventually you might get your freedom some uncertain time in the future. <laughs> Make sure, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Or you would die. How necessary is nationalism in teaching um, to be a good citizen? Not. I mean, <laughs> what exactly? I, okay, in the movie, the, the, it just practically says, when there's war, you should fight and not run away. You know, it's really that. You should, you should uh, work together with people who are on the same side as you are, on the, on the same country as you, mm -hmm. you know, so that you win the war. You know, but how do you translate that? Okay, what 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 are the usual things that uh, that the propaganda machines are saying now? You know, pay taxes. Mm -hmm. You know, vote. Those things. Yeah. Uh, what? ng atin. Which means watch Filipino movies. Patronize local. Okay, buy local. Yeah. Oh. Buy bench. Yeah. Or <laughs> you know th those kinds of things. How how necessary is nationalism? in these things like is it maybe it's impossible to teach these things without teaching some sense of nationalism or do you think you can just tell people to be good citizens why because it will be good for you in the end you know if you if you pay your taxes uh, you'll use better uh, resources and uh, you'll be paying for uh, progress in your country and who will benefit from that progress? It's you. Mm -hmm. But do you? Ha uh, but is nationalism the necessary shortcut that gets that message across in the shortest number of words? Well, nationalism is one word, right? Or yeah. Maybe it's like, necessary. What do you think? Is it a, uh, you know, in France? How does it happen in France? Wow. Well, uh, 
<laughs> those ideas that you said, like propaganda around pay your taxes, go vote, yeah. and um, the third one, excuse me. Local, like you ah, yeah, buy, buy local. local. Yeah. Actually, those are things, especially the third one, that have been part of the French media for years now. Yeah. And uh, so, to, to me, also from Switzerland, the idea of nationalism um, has a negative tone to it, yeah. while patriot, patriot, patriotism. patriotism doesn't have a negative tone to it. So yeah. the definition between both might be slightly yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. I think like, Orwell wrote about the distinction mm -hmm. as well, um, the difference between nationalism and patriotism. Please go ahead. Uh, for me, patriotism is love your country. But that doesn't mean do not love mm. your neighbor. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. How, however, like nationalism would be everything for your country yeah. first, and yeah. whatever goes for later. And the the subtlety between both mm. is even in Europe not understood by everybody. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I know that if some of my friends from there would listen to me right now, they would they would kind Ooh. of cringe because yeah, you you probably have noticed that all over Europe this is there is this huge. Uh, crisis around nationality, mm -hmm. like the refugee crisis is actually a yeah. huge symbol of that, but we don't need to get into that. But so when I hear the Filipinos actually having the same kind of, uh, can we call it a moral issue, like a okay. unity issue, yeah. this unity issue, it's, it, it's kind of interesting to see that it, it is not about like welfare. It's about how do we work together in order to improve us as a whole mm. and ourselves as one person so the the idea i think that the movie wants to give is that we should show more unity yeah. but how they want us to understand that the message itself like how the message is written yeah. it's kind of yeah it's kind of extreme it seems like in the philippines there's this idea like uh, also in in south it's in um, davao right that yeah. Duterte is like there is okay. this idea that there is some kind of extreme behavior yeah. is necessary for yeah. a better good on a long. That's another term. value. That's yeah. another value that the that the writers of the movie thought was mm -hmm. okay to instill mm -hmm. in in its viewers. The idea that uh, sometimes extreme violence uh, is necessary to get you know when you need to do something, and that's what I what I you know that message plus what they said in the beginning equals Marcos, <laughs> pro okay, yeah. Marcos, you know, like this violent leader on the level of a dictator mm -hmm. uh, is, um, is doing things unilaterally, like what, you, you know, he's, he'll do his way, he'll kill people if you don't follow him, mm -hmm. you know, that just screams Marcos and today Duterte. Essentially, it's, it's the idea that, that uh, people can become beyond the law. And, yeah. you know, things like due process, you know, things like uh, the presumption of innocence, just throw that out the window. Yeah. Thank you for watching this episode of the podcast. If you have comments, like I said, you know the drill. Um, thank you, Addy. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you, Pepe. And see you next time. Bye.